Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion China. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on radiant emission, which stands for RE. I'm going to discuss in detail, step by step, the test procedures of radiant emission. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 54 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like this video. So guys, if you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, guys, thank you so much for your strong support. I also like to share this. So guys, if you have any topics that you guys are keen to learn, you can also send me an email or send some comments so that I'm aware of the situation. So once again, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate your strong support. Let's understand what is radiate emission testing. Okay, radiate emission testing, also known as electromagnetic interference testing. Okay, it is a crucial process in electronics and electrical engineering. It is conducted to ensure that electronics device, or maybe I should say that the new electronics device actually compliant with regulatory standards regards the unintended emission of electromagnetic energy. Okay, when electronics device operate, they definitely, okay, whether is it small or substantial, electromagnetic radiation, if this radiation extends beyond certain limit, okay, typically we have a limit line, so if this amount of radiation more than the limit line, Okay, so if this happens, okay, it can interfere with the operation of other nearby electronics device, leading to potential malfunctions or disturbance. Radiate emission testing aims to measure and evaluate the electromagnetic field generated by the device under test to ensure that they fall within the accepted limits. Okay, so this is a very simple so-called Definition, what is radiant emission testing? Okay, let's come into deep detail. Okay, so this diagram here shows the setup of radiant emission testing. Okay, so this setup is valid for all the CISPR except CISPR 25. Okay, which on the next slide, I will explain on CISPR 25. But this setup is basically applied to all CISPR, CISPR 11, CISPR 22, etc. Okay, so basically this setup is valid. So one key thing is basically you can see that there are 3 meter or 10 meter, okay, which means that the distance between your EUT and antenna, they can be either 3 meter or 10 meter, and in some case, even 30 meter. Okay, but nowadays, I think commonly will be just 3 meter and also 10 meter. So basically, this is what it means. Your EUT and antenna has a distance of either 3 meter or 10 meter. You have this variable antenna height, 1 meter to 4 meter. Over here, you can see that this is basically an antenna mask that controls the antenna height. So the antenna typically can start off at 1 meter and then after that 1.5 meter, 2 meter, 2.5, etc. All the way up to 4 meter. Next, we have this rotating table. Okay, so basically this is a turntable. You can see that a non-conductive table is put on top on the turntable. And this thing can turn 360 degree. Over here, let me quickly identify three important so-called portion here. So basically, this is where you put your EUT on the turntable. This is where the antenna is. Okay, the antenna is actually connected to a spectrum analyzer or EMI receiver, which is not shown over here. Okay, but in general, this radio emission consists of three main parts. One will be the test and measurement equipment. For example, the EMI receiver here and also the spectrum analyzer. Another one will be the antenna. Last but not least, over here is where we put our EUT. 
Okay, so these are the three important so-called setup for radiant emission testing. As I mentioned earlier on, CISPR 25 is slightly different from the rest of the CISPR. Okay, uh, maybe if time permit, okay, on maybe some some back video later on, I will do some discussion on this CISPR 25. Okay, but the key difference between CISPR 25 and the rest of the CISPR standard, okay, for CISPR 25, okay, the antenna has a fixed height, which is one meter. Okay, the distance is also one meter. Okay, earlier on, if you still remember, okay, for the rest of the CISPR, it can be either three meter or ten meter. But for CISPR twenty five, it's only one meter. And the turntable don't need to rotate. Okay, which means that the table is actually so called fixed. Which means the DUT is actually facing one certain direction. That's all. Okay, so keep this in mind. If you're doing this CISPR twenty five, these are all the consider factor. So if the rest of the CISPR Okay, so this will be the considerator factors here. Okay, let's quickly discuss what are all the steps okay, for doing this radiate emission testing. Okay, first step here basically will be all the preparation. Okay, for example, you need to set up the test equipment to okay, ensure that all test equipment, including spectral analyzer, EMI receiver, antenna amplifier, and any necessary accessory are properly set up and calibrate. Okay, so in short, okay, make sure uh, all the device, all the equipment are there and make sure that all the equipment are calibrated. Okay, so this is the first step to do a simple preparation before you start on the radiate emission testing. Okay, so a tripod is used to support the antenna, okay, which is connected to an EMI receiver spectrum analyzer to measure the radiate emission from the DUT. Okay, so basically this is what I mean here. So this is a tripod. Okay, typically they support the antenna Okay, on the other end, basically they are connected to an either EMI receiver or spectrum analyzer. Okay, in fact, there will be a switch. Basically, they can select either connect to the EMI receiver or the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so basically, this set of equipment are mainly to measure and quantify the rated emission from the EUT. Okay, step number two. Okay, the EUT under test is placed on a non-conductive table. Okay, remember... This cannot be metallic. Okay, so typically need to be non-conductive. I think you have those special type of fiber okay, that will be added as a table here. So basically the table height is a, approximately about 0 0.8 meter. So basically you can see from here it's about 0 0.8 meter. Okay, so they actually sit on a rotatable turntable. So basically underneath will be a turntable. So the turntable will be able to turn 360 degree. So you need to ensure that your DUT is positioned according to the requirement specified in the standard or the test plan. Okay, so basically this is the setup of the EUT. Okay, so next we are going to establish what are the test condition. Okay, so firstly we need to power out your EUT. Okay, so we, we turn on your EUT and we must allow the EUT to stabilize. Okay, because they may have some search etc. when you initially power on. So therefore, we need to ensure that it actually stabilizes according to the manufacturer specification. After that, okay, for some of the case, but not all, we can configure the EUT. Okay, so for example, we can set up the EUT to operate in a appropriate test mode. Okay, or operation status for the specific test being conducted. Okay, I remember I done a NFC reader. So for example, when it's an NFC reader, okay, I must program the NFC to continuous reading the tag. Okay, so basically this is what you need to do. So in short, okay, there are various operation st status. Okay, for example, for NFC reader, okay, I need to program the NFC to be continuous reading the tag. And then after that, I actually measure the radiate emission from the NFC device. Okay, so this will be the step number three, establish test condition. Okay, number four, we need to perform pre-test measurement. Okay, all the background noise measurement, okay, we can use the spectrum analyzer to measure the ambient electromagnetic noise level in the test environment. This measurement is essential for establish a baseline for comparison with emission generated by the EUT. So once you set up everything, okay, so I suggest that it's always good to measure your background noise measurement, which means that your EUT is not powered on. You do a very quick measure, okay, so that you have your ampere 
noise environment. So anything that generate from your EUT, it will be very distinct. So before that, you need to capture so-called your ambient electromagnetic noise level so that later on you can quantify the amount of radiation by your EUT. Step number five, conduct radiate emission test. Okay, so now we are ready to conduct this radiation emission test. Okay, the emission from each phase of the EUT are measured by moving the measuring antenna up and down from one meter to four meter. Okay, both horizontal and vertical polarization are measured. Okay, let me share with you some of the work. So what happened here is basically the antenna height will hoist up to about one meter. After that, the turntable will start to turn 360 degrees. The reason why they turn 360 degrees so that they ensure your EUT has an opportunity, any phases of your EUT has the opportunity to face the antenna. So therefore, the turntable will turn 360 degree. So while the antenna is hold at one meter, okay, they are going to do a so-called maximum pitch hold on this uh, spectrum analyzer. So the spectrum analyzer measure all the maximum so-called signal at all the frequency while this turntable turn. So after that, the antenna will hoist up to 1.5 meter. Again, the turntable will turn and the spectrum analyzer again will capture all the maximum strength okay, at the height of 1.5 meter. This thing continue to 2 meter, okay, to 2.5, to 3, to 3.5, and then to 4 meter. So basically, in short, they capture all the maximum peak value of the frequency. So after that, they will clearly select those that exceed the limit line to do the final testing, which later on I will disclose uh, early, later on. So on the fifth, on the conducted radiate emission, okay, the field strength in dB microvolt per meter is captured by the EMI receiver. Okay, so once we use this EMI receiver, means that this will be your final test. Remember when we actually do the first initial peak so-called pit search, okay, basically we use a spectrum analyzer. Okay, when we actually use the EMI receiver, it's so-called the final testing here. Okay, at frequency typically from 9 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz. Okay, so nowadays we have stretched to 6 gigahertz. Okay, but for EMI receiver, they will be only up from 9K to 1 gigahertz. As for 1 gig to 6 gigahertz will be done by spectrum analyzer. Okay, the measure field strength is then compared, for example, to the limit line of CISPR 22. So in short, okay, let me give you some idea. So basically, the antenna holds up all the various height. They basically capture all the peak strength okay, of your DUT at different frequency. So after that, okay, for example, there will be some above the limit line. So basically, they will activate the EMI receiver to do a DUT measurement. So over here, the turntable will turn slower. Okay, the height will not be strictly just one. So basically, the antenna will hoist up from 1 meter to 1.5. Okay, it can be like uh, 1, 1.0, 1, 1.02, like etc. So basically, they will find the so-called the height of the antenna that got the maximum okay, so-called uh, radiate emission from your EUT. And again, the turntable will turn to the Facing that has the maximum value. So basically with that maximum value, basically all the reading will be tested by the EMI receiver to see whether it can be passed the test or not. So basically if it's lower than the limit line, it conclude that it can pass the test, which I'm going to further discuss on step number six. Okay, on step number six, okay, mitigation and remedy. Okay, so if emission exceed the acceptable limit, Okay, you need to identify potential source of interference and implement appropriate mitigation measures such as shielding, filtering, or redesign the PCB board. Okay, for example, for this case here, you may consider to shield your EUT, okay, or you can add some low pass, high pass, so called filtering in order to minimize the radiation. Okay, or you need to redesign your PCB circuitry. So basically, this will be under the mitigation and Remediation. Okay, step number seven okay, will be the final evaluation. Okay, let's say if the measured field strength is less than the limit line, everything all less than the limit line of CISPR 22, after they do the detailed scan, so I can conclude that your EUT has passed the radiate emission 
test requirement. So this hopefully give you the idea how can we actually perform the step-by-step -step radio emission testing. Okay, so again, okay, if this video somehow help you to understand, okay, please help by like this video and also consider to subscribe to this channel. Guys, thank you so much. Okay, let's do a very quick conclusion. Okay, the electromagnetic wave don't extend out from your product in a nice spirit pattern. Okay, so basically they won't be a very nice so-called uh, how to understand this also you imagine that it will be like a cone shape. Okay, it won't extend out just like a very nice cone shape pattern here. The emission tends to be quite directive. Okay, so a test step has to vary the height of the receiving antenna between one and four meter as well as rotate a turntable. Okay, as it mentioned here, any radiation typically they are very directive, which means that they will pinpoint a certain direction. Okay, so therefore, okay, the receiving antenna need to be in between one and four meter, as well as we need to rotate your EUT. Okay, so your EUT actually is placed onto a turntable. The receiving antenna pick up both the signal directly from your EUT as well as a bounce off the ground. Okay, to increase measurement accuracy, the ground is covered with an electromagnetic reflective surface. For example, okay, on the ground, okay, we can put aluminium, can put a steel or wire mesh, etc. And this ground must be relatively flat. Okay, so typically when you actually in the shield room of an EMC, okay, the ground most of the time are they are quite flat. Okay, I have not seen any so-called slope or EMC chamber. So basically, the test lab will scan the frequency band of interest and look for emission that are close to the limit. Okay, use a process called maximization. Okay, so basically, you can say that this is a pitch search. Okay, the test lab focus in on each of these emission and quantify the amplitude of the field strength. So with this, okay, I hope you have a better idea on a step-by-step -step procedure of radiate emission testing. So once again, guys, thank you so much for your time. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.